Okay, hold on. I just need to get like in the right uniform for this. Okay, I got my flannel. I got my thermal. I am ready to do this thing. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm really excited for today's video. Uh, this is one that I have been researching for the last month. It's like honestly one of my new favorite tropes. So let's get into it. Okay, so for today's video, I am going to be giving my best mountain men, wilderness men recommendations. So this new obsession of mine started last month in January when I read Credence. Um, it really like, it opened the door for me and I'm like, okay, I want more books like this where there's isolation and cabins and axe chopping men. Sign me up, give me more books. I'm totally here for it. Okay, so before I start the recommendations, I want to say that the books that I picked all fit this trope in the sense of you have isolation, a small town, um, one or two of our characters live in a cabin, usually the guy wears plaid, um, there's some axe chopping in there, um, yeah, so all of these books are gonna fit that, like, category description. Okay, so I have six books I'm going to be recommending uh, for our physical tour on KU, and then out of my physical pile, uh, two of them I know for sure are also available on KU. Okay, so the first book is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Uh, I just finished this the other day. I don't know why it took me so long to get like to this. I've had it on my shelf forever, but I loved it. It was very wholesome. Um, it made me kind of tear up at the end. It just... I really liked it. Okay, so this book is a single POV. You are going to follow Kala. She is in her mid-20s. She lives in Toronto with her stepfather and her mother. Uh, when the book starts, she had just gotten fired and she goes home and she's talking with her parents and she finds out from her mom that her biological father who lives in Alaska is sick with cancer. And up until this point, Kala didn't know her father. Um, her mother and him separated when she was barely two years old, and he just never came to visit her. Uh, he just, he likes his isolation in Alaska, and in turn, his mo her, her mom never took her to visit. It was just, uh, there was a whole love drama between her parents, too, which I found kind of interesting in this book, too. So Kala makes a decision to fly out to Alaska to basically come to terms with her father, say goodbye, and get a little bit of a relationship with him before he passes. Now, when Kala arrives, she is picked up in a very, very tiny plane by um, a very, very grumpy man named Jonah. Now, I should probably mention going into this book, Kala's father owns a small plane company because they live in such isolation in Alaska that they have to use all these planes to get supplies in and out, and her father owns one of the companies that does that. So one of his pilots, Jonah, is sent to go pick up Kala, and when he arrives and sees how high maintenance looking she is, he is not for it. Now, like I said, I loved this one. It was very sweet and it was very wholesome. My only gripe about this is it does fade to black. So if that bothers you with your spicy, intimate scenes, just a forewarning. Okay, so this next one I'm going to recommend, I read it back in October. It was one of my favorite favorite reads of 2021 and after I read Credence and started this whole mountain man journey I went back to this one and I'm like oh this totally fits the bill and that is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Um, I have talked about this one quite a bit on my channel. I'm sure a lot of people have read it but if you haven't and you are intrigued uh, this is a dual POV only a few chapters are from Archer's POV but that's okay. Um, so you're gonna follow Brie. Brie is new to town, once again, small town, 
um, she's running from her past. She had something very tragic happen to her and she just needed to get away and she needed a fresh start. So she arrives in this small town and she gets settled and everything and she meets this man on the street after she buys groceries. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, like the bag opens and everything rolls out and this guy just comes up and starts helping her. Um, and she's trying to say thank you and make small talk with him and everything, but he is just not like talking back to her. And then he just like walks away and that's that. So then you come to find out that the man that she met was Archer Hale and he is the town mute and he is so misunderstood nobody in the town even tries to make an effort to communicate with him or speak with him and his whole backstory is so sad I was crying during this book it does have a happy ending though so I really do want to emphasize on that but this is totally gonna fit that trope because Archer is very isolated um, he's been alone for a good chunk of his life since his uncle who was his guardian had passed away and like when Bree meets him he's so rugged looking um, like he needs a haircut he's never shaved um, she teaches him a lot of things it just when I say this was a beautiful story I wish I could reread this for the first time again I I absolutely loved it. Um, the relationship between Brie and Archer, uh, that was soulmates, that was true love, it, yes. Okay, and now going completely off left field from the last book I mentioned, uh, we're gonna go the dark romance vibe, and that is Credence, and this is the book that totally inspired this video. Okay, so first I do want to mention, uh, look up trigger warnings for this. This is totally not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, when I went in and read it, there were a lot of negative reviews. In fact, it kind of scared me from attempting it, but then I read it and honestly, I think this might make my top book reads of 2022. That's how much I loved it. Okay, so this book is, I, I will mention it's not a reverse harem, but there are multiple love interests going on at the same time. She's just going to pick one of them at the end. So this is a multi POV. Uh, you are going to follow Tiernan. Tiernan is an 18 year old. Her parents have recently passed away. Uh, she gets a call from her step uncle that she has never ever met because he and her father absolutely hated each other. And um, this step uncle says, listen, uh, your parents apparently left your care to me because she's a senior in high school. So and uh, I'm gonna give you the option. You can come live with me and my two sons or you can just stay where you are. Um, now, up until this point, Tiernan, she, her parents were like famous or something. Her mom was an actress and her dad was a producer. So she was very into her privacy and everything. And after, there was a whole scandal when her parents um, passing away. You'll read about that in the first chapter. But uh, she wanted to basically disconnect uh be totally away from social media she didn't want people to find her so when she finds out that jake and his sons live in an isolated cabin in colorado where they get snowed in for six months out of the year she is like okay sign me up so tiernan arrives in this small town in colorado and uh you meet jake and his two sons noah and caleb and uh, Tiernan is going to develop a relationship with all three. I thought it was done very well. Uh, there is something in this story that I think is really important of the re probably why I liked it so much. And um, it's that Tiernan's mother taught her a rule of three growing up with love. And it's that you should be with three men intimately before you settle down. And the first man is all about lust, the second man is all about learning, and the third man is all about love. And as soon as that lesson was explained in the book, I'm like, okay, that's exactly what's going to happen as each guy is going to follow one of those. And that's what happened because she did fall in love with him at the end. Um, I totally love this book. Um, I have a spoiler and non-spoiler review on it where I really ramble on. I will mention who my favorite guy is because I'm not going to mention that in this book because it'll give away of... Who she ends up with so um yeah but pick up credence if you are willing to try something a little different okay and now for probably the greatest book i have ever read and i only read it like two or three weeks ago and that is all roads lead here by mariana zapata i am just gonna like i tapped the ever living hell out of this book i was obsessed i didn't want it to stop this 
I can't describe how amazing this book is. Okay, so obviously Being a Marianne is a pot of book. This is going to be a very slow burn, but oh my goodness, was it worth it? Um, the lingering, the tensions, just the barely touching hands. Oh, I love it. The eye contact, it just give me more. Okay, so this story is going to follow Aurora. Aurora is a recent divorcee. Uh, she moves back to her childhood town in, once again, Colorado. And um, when she arrives, she arrives in summer peak season, so there's like no rentals or anything available, and the only one she's able to find is this garage Airbnb apartment. So when she gets there and she gets her keys and her codes and she gets all settled in, um, she is surprised that this very grumpy man comes barging in and is asking her what is she doing there. You come to find out he had no knowledge of his garage apartment being rented out and that his teenage son Amos did it behind his back because he wanted to make a few bucks for the summer thinking his dad was going to be gone the whole time. So after a lot of begging and groveling and um, basically paying to pay triple the amount, um, the man, Tobias Rhodes, ends up letting Aurora stay, but he gives her a deadline of a month. He's like, a month, then you're gone, you're out, I don't want to see you or talk to you again. And then obviously, during that month, um, development happens. It's amazing. I love it. Um, Tobias Rhodes is also a game warden, so he was like the law enforcement in charge of the wilderness. Um, he had a teenage son, so he was, he was the daddy dilf to end all dilfs. He was axe chopping. There was a scene in here where she's describing looking at him chopping with chest hair and everything. And, um, on that page, I think Mariana Zapata said he was the dilf to end all dilfs. And after reading this book, I 100,000 infinity percent agree. Um, Tobias Rhodes is probably the best man I have ever read about to date, so no one is beating this for me. And real fast, I do want to mention another thing that I loved about this book was there was a lot of hiking in here, and I, nor, I thought that would bore me, but it didn't. I, some of the hiking scenes were like the best ones, and they were done so well that it made me want to get up early every single morning and go hiking, and did I do that? No. Maybe I'll do that when it gets warmer. I don't know, but it was... Mariana Zapata does a very good job with just the journey of getting the couple to where they need to be. And a lot of that happened in these hiking scenes. So, yes, try to make all roads lead here a priority if you are just starting off with Mariana Zapata books. Okay, and then on my Kindle, I read Hush Darling. Um, this, I found this on TikTok and I'm really glad I did because, um, it was intense and this is why I wanted to add this one to it because a lot of these books, they each have something very different about them and this one, like I said, it gave me a lot of anxiety the entire time I was reading because I just didn't want certain things to happen. Okay, so Hush Darling is a dual POV and, uh, you follow Gia and Tanner. Now, Gia lives in, I think, upstate New York, and at the very beginning of the book, she is in an abusive marriage with a mobster, like a very scary mafia man, and um, at the very beginning of the book, she learns that she is pregnant, something she's been trying to prevent, um, but her husband has kind of forced it on her, and so... She doesn't tell him. She keeps lying to him because she and her best friend have been planning her escape. And so she goes to visit her best friend. Her best friend is an OB, so she gives her, like, all this information. And she's, like, just letting you know, now that you're pregnant, it's going to be public knowledge on medical records and your husband can look it up. So her best friend helps her get out. Like, there's this whole thing where um, they take her blood and they, like, pour it all over rocks to make it look like she was in an accident because this is how badly she needs to get away from this man like you can just you can feel her fear whenever you were reading her chapters in her head like I like I said I had such anxiety the entire time I was reading it so Gia does end up fleeing she gets away and her friend had made her um 
like a travel guide said you need to end up in Canada just keep driving do not stop until you get to Canada well what ends up happening is there is a snowstorm and it gets her like a hundred so miles off course and um, her car veers off the road and she finds um, lodging like like cabin rentals all a bunch of them out in the woods and so she sneaks into one and end up ends up squatting in there for like the night so then you meet Tanner and Tanner is an isolated lonely man who owns all of these cabin properties so he grabs his dog in the middle of the night in the snow with a flashlight and goes to look. Now, he's not angry. I want to point that out. At first, he's very concerned because he's like, oh, it's a snowstorm. Somebody probably needed shelter. They need some help. So he goes to figure out what's going on. Um, so he gets in the house, and I think Gio was in the shower at that point. And he's going through her purse and everything, looking at ID. At this point, Gia comes out of the shower and she's yelling at him to stop, like, hey, and he's not saying anything. And then you find out that Tanner is deaf. So this one really gave me a lot of Archer's voice vibes because not only do you have a girl that has arrived in town that's running from their past, but you also have, you know, a man that physically cannot speak. Um, Archer could hear Tanner can't that's the only difference um, but another similarity is the townspeople um, in Archer's voice they were not very friendly with him they just they didn't want to understand him and with Tanner um, something happened in Tanner's past with his wife and the town blames him for it and they don't treat him very well and this was just a very wholesome story of two people finding love with each other and uh, Tanner really took care of Gia and it was just a beautiful story but like I said my anxiety was going the whole time because I'm like I don't want her to get caught I don't want her horrible husband to find her just let these two live in their cabin in isolation forever and ever and yeah it was just try to go pick this one up if you can okay and then the final book I'm going to recommend I actually just finished it last night um, it is called things we never got over this is actually a new release just from last month so I hadn't heard about it it wasn't on my radar and then I saw Larissa's video on TikTok, Larry reads and I'm like okay um, I need to go pick this up ASAP this one is also a unique one um, this one's a rom-com and the, the setup of it I honestly have never read anything like it, so I'm going to explain it a little bit because it's all in the first chapter. I have to talk about it because I think it's going to be the hook. Okay, so the story starts off with Naomi. Naomi gets a call from her twin sister. Now, her twin sister is evil, and I'm not saying that lightly. Like, she has never had a good relationship with her sister. Her sister has done horrible things for a very long time, and she actually has not seen her in over a decade. So her sister calls her out of the blue and says, I am in a lot of trouble. You need to bring cash. Please help me out. So Naomi arrives in this small town in Virginia called Knock em Out. I think that was the name of it. And um, she goes in a coffee shop to get coffee. And when she's in there, um, the barista is not very nice to her. And um, keeps calling her Tina which is her sister's name, and she's like, I am not Tina, I promise, I promise. And you can give a sense from other people that are in this coffee shop, people do not like her sister. And so she is trying to say, I am not my sister, I promise. And then all of a sudden this man comes in there and starts yelling at her. And he's like, get out of this place, stop harassing these customers, leave, I am done with you, Tina. And she's like, I am not Tina, I do not like you, stop yelling at me, go away. She walks out of the coffee shop to go meet up with her sister and she notices that her car is not parked where it's supposed to be. So the grumpy man that was just yelling at her, he follows her out and I think was trying to apologize or something and offers to give her a ride to the police station to see if maybe the car was towed instead. So they get to the police station, they find out the car was never towed, and that it was stolen with her purse inside. So then the grumpy man, whose name is Knox, he then takes her back to her hotel, 
to get her things and kind of figure some stuff out. And when they get in the hotel room, the hotel room is trashed. Um, her laptop has been stolen, some things out of her suitcase, and sitting in the room waiting for her is her 11-year-old niece that she has never met. So basically what has happened is her evil twin sister has lured her to this town, stolen her car, stolen her money, stolen her possessions, and left her daughter there for her sister to raise. And this is all in the first chapter of the book. This is the setup. I was hooked right away. It was fun. So our leading man is Knox and he's so grumpy. I mean, this book took grumpy sunshine to a whole new level. Um, at the very beginning of the book, Naomi has flowers in her hair. And because of that, it, it causes Knox to call her Daisy. That's her nickname for the rest of the book. Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved it. So I don't know if it was like guilt from the way he treated her in that coffee shop, mistaking her for her sister or anything, but he ends up helping her and her niece, Wele. Um, they don't have a place to stay. So he lives in these cabin rental properties that his grandparents owned. And so he takes her back and he gives her a cottage. He's like, my grandma owns these properties here, take this cottage. And helps her settle down with a really nice place to leave and this man hates everyone in his town so this was definitely an i hate everybody but you trope and i was here for it now this one is a little different in the sense that Knox himself is not like an axe chopping wilderness man he lives in the wilderness he lives in a cabin um he is described with the beard and everything in fact uh naomi's nickname for him throughout the book is viking uh, the only thing different about Knox is he won the lottery like several years ago and so he decided to invest all the money back into his hometown so he owns a lot of properties um, and so that's also how he is able to help her. Uh, he pays for a lot of things I think without her knowing so you know there's a pride thing too. Uh, this book is also insane on jealousy. Um, Knox has a brother who is a cop who also shows interest in Naomi. Uh, so yeah, um, Knox's POV chapters were some of my favorites because just the jealousy you were reading about, because he was in his mind, first of all, he's a bachelor. He's in his early forties. He does not want to settle down. And he's like, I don't want her, but I want her. Ugh, I don't want my brother to have her though. He can't have her. So I'm going to mark my claim on her. So he can't have her, you know, toxic maleness, but I was here for it. I also absolutely loved Naomi's niece, Wele. Um, she was dealt a really crappy hand with who her mother was, and she just had a positive attitude. And I loved her relationship with Knox. It was adorable. It was cute and wholesome. Yes, try to go make this one a priority if you can. It is free on KU. Okay, so that is going to do it for all of my Mountain Men Wilderness Rex. I hope that uh, some of these books will intrigue you. Um, I've noticed on my bookstagram, I'm like, the Mountain Men thing is really starting to take off right now. And that's why I wanted to make this video because I needed more and I still want more. So if there are more wilderness axe chopping plaid wearing men out there, please let me know because I, I desperately need to read about them. So please. Alright guys, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Bye!